Django Unchained takes place in Mississippi during the height of slavery in America. The movie is about a freed slave named Django, who is the story's equivalent of Beowulf. Django is helped by a German bounty hunter who teaches the freed slave to become an assassin and complete his journey to save his wife from a notorious plantation owner. Django Unchained has many parallels to Beowulf and the archetypal legend, such as the character's basis in Christianity, plot, and the overall setting. Django Unchained draws many plot similarities to Beowulf in the archetypal plot. First, there is a main hero, Django, pictured here as the equivalent of Beowulf. He goes on a journey to save his wife, similar to Beowulf's treasure, journey for treasure. The movie follows the 12 steps of the archetypal journey very closely. Django Unchained starts off in an ordinary world, where Django is a slave being transported through Texas by slave traders. This equates to the beginning of Beowulf, where he hears from sailors about a monster named Grendel killing innocent people. Then, in Django Unchained, the call to adventure happens when the German bounty hunter, Dr. King Schultz, appears, to, appears and escapes with Django. In Beowulf, the call to adventure happens when Beowulf gathers up 12 warriors and decides to sail to Denmark to help fight the monster. Django crosses the threshold when he kills the overseer that used to be in charge of whipping and beating him and his wife. Similarly, in Beowulf, he crosses the threshold when he enters into the Mead Hall in Denmark and meets Hrothgar, where he learns of their troubles. They go on to infiltrate the owner of Django's wife, which takes them to the owner's house, a very dangerous place called Candyland, run by the owner Calvin Candy. Just like in, ja in Beowulf, when he travels to the bottom of the lake to fight Grendel's mother. Django gets into a gun battle with the slave master and his servants that ends in Django's near death and capture by the slave owner, just like in Beowulf when he is nearly killed by Grendel's mother and is saved only by this chainmail suit. Finally, in the end, Django frees his wife and is truly happy for he has succeeded in his mission, whereas in Beowulf he feels that he was most successful when he kills the dragon and was able to take its, its treasure. The movie Django Unchained shows the archetypal story through a different perspective, yet it still parallels the archetypal story as well as Beowulf throughout the duration of the movie. Just like Beowulf, Django contains many situations where Christian themes and motifs are shown. Django is called to find and kill the brittle brothers, like Beowulf is called upon to kill Grendel, a quest that God has called on him on and only one that both Beowulf and Django can complete. The first bounty Django collects is from John Brittle, who prepares to whip a slave girl while quoting a book from the Old Testament. As Django shoots him, a page of the Bible gets stuck on John's heart, and blood pours out of the bullet hole. This symbolizes an impure heart, something the Bible bans, just like Grendel in Beowulf. Grendel's heart is full of jealousy because of the meat. Mead Hall and Hrothgar's prosperity. In both cases, the enemy shows an impure heart and is defeated. As the Mandingo fighters are walking into Candyland, A Hundred Black Coffins by Rick Ross plays. The rap calls for black coffins and black pe preachers to give black sermons while we send them all to hell. This symbolizes the denial call to turn the other cheek to the white people who attack them. Beowulf can only retaliate with violence against Grendel, Grendel's mom, and the dragon. God also has consequences for these actions, as Beowulf is killed by the dragon and Dr. Schultz is killed in Candyland. Both Django and Beowulf are also pursuing different things in their quest. Django is pursuing his wife in slavery, slavery while Beowulf is pursuing fame. In both Django and Beowulf, they attribute God to wanting to achieve their quest, but realize it is a process, and they will go through trials, just like the stories of the Bible. As Wiglaf and Beowulf kill the dragon, Django rescues his wife, Brumhilda, from good always triumphs evil. Beowulf saves the Geats and Hrothgar from death, while Django rewrites something he feels is wrong. This is always the good is stronger than the bad. Like in the tale of Beowulf, Django is the epic hero of the movie Django Unchained. Like Beowulf, Django undergoes multiple levels of the archetypal journey. Django meets his mentor in the opening scene, Dr. King Schultz, the man who frees him. Dr. King Schultz is an excellent bounty hunter and wants Django's help. In return, he would help him find his wife, which is Django's call to journey. In comparison to Beowulf, his call to journey was when he heard about Grendel and decided to go help. Dr. King Schultz trains Django in every aspect of becoming a warrior. He shows him how to become an excellent sharpshooter and how to ride a horse. Unlike in Beowulf, where Beowulf is already an excellent warrior. 
Django learns quickly and is an effective helping hand in bounty hunting. Django and Dr. King Schultz rake in the bounties and are coming closer to the part of the story where they need to come up with an approach. Dr. King Schultz comes up with the idea of becoming Mandingo fighters, which is similar to dog fighting except with human slaves. Django, being an ex-slave, knows exactly how cruel this route could be and goes along with the idea and tries to save his wife. This can relate to Beowulf because he approaches the monster aggressively. Django meets a villain of the story, Mr. Candy. Mr. Candy represents evil, like in Beowulf, where Grendel and his mother represent evil. Mr. Candy also holds the treasure of the story, Django's wife, Brumhilda. As I said earlier, Brumhilda is, in the is the prize of the story. Django fought through this whole journey to finally find out where she was and save her from the notorious slave owner in comparison to Beowulf, where he has to fight his way to find the treasure from the dragon. Mr. Candy is exactly like the dragon in Beowulf. To get the treasure, Django has to go through a gun battle, as the same with Beowulf having to fight the dragon with the sword. Unlike in Beowulf, Django survives the battle. He is the perfect blueprint of a freed slave, saving his wife and destroying one of the most infamous plantations, along with killing the owner and all of his men. This is known as the castle. This setting is characterized as strong, possibly bewitched or enchanted, and holding a great treasure or princess. Monsieur Candy's plantation has many of these same characteristics as the archetypal setting of the castle. Two of the most noticeable characteristics are it being a place of strength and containing Django's wife, who also represents the archetypal princess. In the final battle of Beowulf, he faces a dangerous dragon who lives on a cliff. Unlike Monsieur Candy's plantation, the dragon's lair only contains one similarity with the archetypal setting of the castle, a great treasure within. Another archetypal setting that these two stories have in common is the tower. This is characterized as a place of strength containing an incredible evil. Once again, Monsieur Candy's plantation fits another archetypal setting. Just as it fit the criteria for the archetypal setting of the castle, it also fits the tower, not only because of being a place of strength, but also because it holds a great evil. Monsieur Candy himself. Known for the cruel torture of his slaves, he is easily the most evil man in Django. In Django. The setting in Beowulf that is most similar to the archetype of the tower is Grendel's mother's lair. Once again, it is characterized as a place of strength due to the deadly creatures that Beowulf must slay to even get into her home. Another characteristic that her home contains is a great evil residing within. Lastly, one more archetypal setting that is prevalent in these two stories is the Threshold. The Threshold is characterized as being a gateway to a new world where a hero grows and changes. In Django, the mountains would be considered the Threshold for when Django returns after the long winter with Dr. King, he, is a he becomes a ruthless bounty hunter on a mission to save his wife. In Beowulf, the Herot serves as a Threshold. Once again, because Beowulf enters and slays Grendel, he gains great fame with the Danes, and he then goes on to, has to go on to slay his mother. Common archetypes, such as settings, characters, and theme, are prevalent in both Django and Beowulf, concluding that even though Beowulf was written hundreds of years before, archetypes are still prevalent in today's literature.